I've been painting from life for the past 46 days and I'm slowly but surely starting to understand nature's color wheel. Even though this color wheel might follow some of the same principles as the color wheel that you're used to, it is not the same one. In the traditional color wheel, we see that complementary colors exist opposite to each other, very far apart. Whereas in nature's color wheel, they seem to coexist a lot closer than the ones that we have created over the years. This is not to say that the color wheels that we know and love are wrong. They're just missing a big part of what nature is teaching us. And there's great artists and other inventors have, who have developed very good techniques for understanding nature's colors. But the ultimate master of color is nature. And there is so much to learn that some people dedicate their whole lifetime to that. If you're looking for not trying to spend your whole life learning color, then I suggest you to do this. Try painting from life for at least three days straight. And if you don't want to paint, then at least observe intensely the colors that exist in nature and how everything is just complements and tertiaries. Everything is perfectly balanced and nothing is standing out. But paradoxically, they also do stand out and look extremely saturated. If we want to achieve this in our paintings, then we have to work more in the secondary and tertiary realm and not identify each color as red, yellow or blue. It is better if we identify the colors that are moving in a certain direction. For example, if the color looks blue, is it moving towards green or is it moving towards a violet, for example, then you know that one is moving towards yellow and the other one is moving towards red. This simple distinction of looking at a color in its secondary form will allow us to see color as it truly is in nature. Not only that, but it also will look a lot better with every other color that we put down on our paper. As you can see me doing right now in the sky, I looked at the sky and asked myself, is it more magenta or moving towards red or is it moving towards green? And the answer was that it was actually moving more towards green and coincidentally, this is the complement of the highlight. So the highlight was more of a red or red orange. This also helps because if my paint is mixed with the highlight color, then it will gray out in a shadow-like fashion, therefore creating a more realistic shadow color than if I would just add blue or black or neutral tint. In these clouds, I used a lot of lavender since lavender sits in a very unique spot in the color wheel and you see it a lot in nature if you look at it closely and it works magic to neutralize a lot of the colors. It just helps a lot toning down. Another thing that we can do to understand nature better is color temperature and asking ourselves, is this color warmer or cooler than the color next to it? For example, the highlight, is the highlight warmer or is it cooler than the shadow side? I used to believe that blue-green was cooler than blue-violet. But in the end, when I think about it and I look at nature, green is actually warmer than blue-violet. And if we want to get all sciencey and we look at the spectrum of light or even the rainbow, we'll see that violet and red-violet is kind of like at the end of the rainbow or the spectrum, making it cooler. And I think that this painting right here really shows the power or those subtleties that this red or red orange that's there doesn't look as warm as you would think it should look compared to the blue green and the violet colors that I'm putting down with the help of lavender. But all of this is just theory and my old own personal experience. I'm not a master of color, but 
it's just the things that I've been noticing in the past 46 days that I've been doing this. There's just things that keep repeating themselves and colors that are always present. I see that complement and like analogous colors, combinations are always present in nature and besides each other. It's never like what we do sometimes in painting that we just choose two colors and paint with those or just three colors and paint with those. They always are existing all the combinations at the same time. But I guess that just makes it easier for us to process all the colors that we actually see and simplify them down into something comprehensible for us. Because it's much easier to think about a red or a blue or a yellow than saying like a three-fourths yellow, one-fourths red and one-half blue, for example. Of course, that's not how we think about it, but there's a lot of computer programs that do think about it or we they express it that way. And also having pigments that are exactly that combination of mixture would just make too many choices and would be making a huge mess in our palettes and it would just not be great. So even though we've created a system on how to go from one color to the other in full, in full hue or saturation, we have to realize that nature doesn't work in full saturation it usually stays within a gray zone the gray zone is where all the colors go and talk and chat at all times of the day and what i can say from this experience is that the more i paint outside and i stay in that gray zone while painting the more it makes sense for me to know what colors i need in their full saturation for me to be able to achieve a certain amount of gray in the painting and that is very interesting and very personal as well because we all perceive light in a different way i mean that's why there's colorblind people i also notice it when i talk to my fiance and when there's a great day outside and i tell her oh look at all that color and she t tells me oh no i only see gray and i really think to myself does she actually just see the color gray? Because when I hear gray, I think of a gray color, just complete gray, you know, like silver kind of gray and no actual tint of, or no hint of red or red violets or green yellows or whatever. The point is that we all perceive it differently. However, nature doesn't lie when it comes to color. Only us as painters are the ones who lie or you could even say misinterpret color. Thanks for watching.